Palmer bet with the big don't argue. Punters will love that. Download our app today and enjoy tackle-busting benefits with great promos, great odds and same-game multi this footy finals at Palmer Bear. Gamble responsibly. For gambler's help, call 1-800-858-858. Hello and welcome to episode 448 of Fergo and the Freak. I'm the Blokes and Rugby League Project, Andrew Ferguson. You can find me on Twitter at AndrewRLP. And join me as always is the glorious League Freak. You can also find on Twitter at League Freak. How you going there, mate? Going very well, Andrew. Very excited. Grand final week. How good is it? I can't remember. Yeah, well, it was a long time ago for you. I'm just used to it. I just call it a week, you know. <laughs> it, it's, uh, I mean, for me, we're four weeks into the cricket season already. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. It feels like the cricket season's been going on for a long time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> No they're playing up there somewhere in the north of Australia. I don't, I don't even know who they're playing. I don't right, surely rugby league's only played in England these days. Well, barely. Barely. Um, but big episode today. We've got a big guest uh, joining us as well. And a, a yes. big as in star size. Let's be clear about that. Yes. Massive superstar. So joining us now is the wonderful, lovely Nadine, who follows the world champion and current NRL champion, Penrith Panthers. How are you, Nadine? I'm good. How are you? I'm pretty good. Um, It's an exciting week for us, eh? It's a very exciting week for us. Um... (laughs) Andrew doesn't understand why there's football still going on. He's like, what the hell? It's September. It's cricket season. Exactly. It's like it's been cricket season for a month now. Two. That's also a joke. Four. Five months? Six months? Yeah, the footy think, season hasn't started yet. I think if anybody's watching cricket still, you're a sociopath. That's true. A young starting Nadine. block, we're looking at you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And Nadine, I've got a fact for you. Hit me with it. Did you know that if Nathan Cleary doesn't get a call up for Australia, he can be eligible to play for Ukraine? Oh, that's amazing. George Clark has dropped that amazing bombshell on grand final. He could talk about the grand final, but obviously he doesn't watch rugby league, so that's what he's got. Well, as, if, as if Nathan Cleary isn't going to get called up for Australia. You'd want to hope so. There will be riots in the street if he does not make that squad. Um, it, Ukraine's not at the Rugby League World Cup, though, to be fair. No. Which makes but, the story even more fucking stupid. Yeah. I, I will say this, though. If uh, there are any Ukraine rugby league fans that haven't booked their tickets for the next World Cup, I've got no sympathy for them. <laughs> exactly. I mean, How much time you, should you, be, you should be getting on that bandwagon now, whether you can afford it or not, whether your team is in there or not, just buy those tickets. Yeah, yeah. How much, how much time do you need? Just drop a few thousand dollars on some tickets in a, for a game that your team might not even make. I, like, if you can't do that, I've got no sympathy for you. And look, don't worry about if you don't know where it's being played. It'll be in England somewhere. Don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's close. Ridiculous. Oh, anyway, so um, there was the fan day. Your daughter went to the fan day. Did she enjoy it? She loved it. She oh, absolutely wow. loved it. Um, Has Nathan Cleary gone home? I saw video no. of him signing autographs. And some no, he's not gone home. And guy went over there and he was trying to usher him away. And he's like, I'm signing shit. Yeah, basically, like a bad smell. In, in typical Penrith fashion, he has been fleeced of every item of clothing on his body, um, <laughs> and uh, he is still signing autographs and taking selfies with everybody at the ground. So it was – no, she had a, a really great day. There were people queuing up from, like, 9 o'clock to get into the ground. So the gates opened at 9.30 for a 10.30 a.m. training session, and people were queued up from nine o'clock just to get in. Um, and yeah, she had the best day, best That's day cool. ever. So, um, you know, she was fully prepared to get herself there as well. She's like, Mum, I'm going to catch a bus. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. But in the end, she didn't need to worry about that. We arranged to get her there um, without her needing to do that. But the, the commitment has been amazing. Now, this week, it's, you know, it's weird because it's like, we've always heard about like, oh, imagine if there was a grand final between the Panthers and Eels and stuff like that. And obviously the Eels have sucked, but um, 
now we've finally got the match up and it is very exciting. Uh, what are you getting the sense of out of people? Because I'm very antisocial. I don't like people. Um, so, so, but you're the opposite. You're, you're a very kind and considerate person. What is your feeling when you talk to people? Um, <clears throat> every, everyone is super excited. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the interesting thing though is despite the Panthers' recent success, um, there's still that element of I can't believe this is happening to my team. It's like you've the first time that you've ever witnessed your team make a grand final. Mm-hmm. So that's, you know, that's been really cool. I think the fact that it is the Battle of the West, you know, the deepest of arch rivals with due respect to West Tigers, um, it's because they like to make it about them when there's when they're playing uh, Penrith. Um, it's but actually I, the greatest. Ivan, Ivan is so cranky at the West Tigers. He still is, apparently. Apparently so. You know, that, that's the agenda. So, um, so it, I think it's it's actually great. I, I really do think that this is, according to most people, this is the grand final that the NRL needed. This is the grand final that the NRL really wanted in terms of supporter bases, revenue opportunities, um, et cetera. So... Um, and it's been super fun, you know, like the last two years have been COVID impacted in terms of what we've been able to celebrate, whether that's, you know, the actual NRL events that they're putting on um, or whether that's club events and, you know, things like the open training session and um, and all of those kinds of things. And even being able to visit, like to go to the game, like obviously last year, if you're in New South Wales, you couldn't go. The year before was uh, reduced numbers. Um, you know, so it's been it's been a long slog for a lot of years, and it's just it's super exciting. You know, everyone's out in all their colours. It's great. Yeah, it's really cool that uh, we get to go through it um, without all the restrictions. Finally, I mean, I think even with the um, grand final celebration last year, I think it was in November or something like that. Uh, you mm. didn't had to have your vaccines to get into that. So. Mm, yeah. Yeah, so it's uh, gosh, that seems like a lifetime ago. It really does. <laughs> like I, I got all that poison pumped into me just for that day. <laughs> anyway, it's been worth it ever since. Yeah, yeah. The, the, no COVID. illness whatsoever. Nah, look, I, I, I haven't caught COVID. Not that it would have stopped me, and all the other health impacts that I've had from that vaccine is just, you don't have to worry about them. I can know that <laughs> months ago now. Anyway, um, just. On the on the fence there, a bit of anti uh, anti vaxxer. No, I'm not a fucking anti vaxxer. Should, should put that in the uh, in the title. Freaky is an anti vaxxer. You we'll probably find we'll get a ton of new listeners. Probably. Do you know something? <laughs> the Hugh Morrison of podcasting the other week. What happened? The Hugh Someone, Morrison. The Jim Morrison of. Oh, podcasting. Jim Morrison. Yeah, he was dead by the time he was 27. That like I, is it a good or a bad thing. I know, well, I mean, you're 48, so that's pretty good. Fuck you, I'm 48. <laughs> you're a fucking 48 year old here, you bastard. Anyway, <laughs> um, so okay, Nadine, like, how how happy would you be to beat Parramatta? Oh, don't. <laughs> you there can are say, no words. You can say. No, there are no words because I so. I am in a fortunate enough position that I bought my grand final tickets the moment they went on sale. Mm -hmm. Um, We go to the grand final every year, have done since 2012, with the exception of last year, obviously. And this was the first year that I genuinely entertained the idea of selling my grand final tickets if we had ended up with particular results going, uh, you know, certain ways. Mm -hmm. Um, And... As a Penrith person, the Parramatta supporter base tends to irritate me, uh, not going to lie. So it would be really nice to keep that losing streak going, <laughs> to be fair. I, I thought Give them that, something else to hate about themselves for the next 12 months. Yeah. <laughs> Look, uh, when I saw a video of them after the match at the Leagues Club and they were chanting, fuck the Bulldogs, I was like, 
this is really going to make people want to get behind the heels, you know? Mm. But I, I've got to say, I, I think that Parramatta is a wonderful team. And if they if they can beat this Panthers team, damn, they deserve it. If like, they beat this Panthers team, how are they going to afford Gutherson and Moses next year? Yeah, good point. I mean, they're both going to be on two million a year, aren't they? Surely. Well, they've both. If they've, if we know Moses has that, you know, clause in his contract where it goes up to a million bucks, mm. makes the if they win the grand final, he won't be the only one. And will they have to shed players? Yeah, I don't think Parramatta genuinely cares. They they're going all out for a grand final win because yeah. we've already seen with their roster and coaching structure next year that they're not looking to be successful next year. <laughs> Are they following the West Tigers lead? No, no, they've got Trey Barrett. <laughs> he's going to be an assistant coach next year. Because he's proven oh, dreamy he's, eyes. He's, he's proven he can handle that role. Whoa. He's an okay assistant coach. Yeah, okay. You're in a grand final. You don't have okay coaching systems. <laughs> You've got very good ones. Why would but you some would argue. Back? No, but some would argue that. Uh, Brad Arthur's coaching style, coaching systems is not elite, and yet they've made a grand final. Brad well, Arthur, I wouldn't say I wouldn't say not elite. I'd say they're good enough because I mean they've been in the finals well, for clearly a clearly they're good enough. Yep, yeah, clearly they're good enough. But it's just it is he's never mentioned in the same breath as the elite coaches, you know, Bellamy, you know, Cleary's actually up there now. You, you always hear Bellamy, Cleary, Robinson, Marshall. obviously Wayne Bennett, or <laughs> Sheens, always, always <laughs> mentioned in the same breath. But, you know, six weeks ago, people were calling for Brad Arthur to be sacked. Well, wow, that was so because they I, thought there was nepotism in place because one of 30 plays in the squad just happened to be related to him. It's it's so fascinating. <laughs> you don't you've never seen a fan base turn so quick in your life, honestly. Oh, the West Tigers fans do. They turn pretty harshly. I mean, they they turn at the sight of you know air. <laughs> I, I saw today West Tigers fans. They the West Tigers uh, extended the contract of uh, Bloor. For another year, I think it was. Mm. Yeah, and I saw poor West Tigers fans. They're like, "Well, you know, he he he's going to lock down that side of the field, and I know he's injury prone this year, but he's got a chance to be one of the best players in the game on that side of the field." And I'm like, "Is he first grader?" <laughs> he's, Mate, a, he's a solid signing. We don't we don't have much to hang our hats on, all right. And there's not much out there. To, there's not much out there that's hat worthy for hanging. So we've just got to go with what we can find. It, I just felt real sorry for them. You know what's funny is that the West Tigers Twitter account's got almost ten thousand followers, I think. And they put out a tweet a couple of days ago, talking about Fan Fest this Wednesday. It says, mm-hmm. "Come catch some of your favourite West Tigers players." Eleven a.m. Fourteen likes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Wait a minute. How many t- Twitter followers do the West Tigers have? That's crazy. Because I've got, yeah, I've got eight thousand. How can the West Tigers only have like ten? So, so, no, sorry. Yeah, it's ninety six point one thousand. That's it. Nine. Okay. Yeah. I was, I was doing them a favour because it's probably only ten thousand. I'm actually Same following. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Fourteen out of ninety six point one k. How many I'll of those are one. actual Tigers supporters though? Probably seven of the fourteen. <laughs> I think a large proportion of those followers will be the coaches that they've had over the last six years. Yeah, actually, the ninety-six one K is probably most of the coaching staff they've had over the last eight years. <laughs> well, it's all the podcasters who are trying to get content, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, so dear. you just said an you picked up an interesting um, point that you just made, Andrew, about you know come and meet your, your favourite players this week. So we've obviously got the NRL Fan Fest. That started today. So it goes today, tomorrow, Friday. What's today? Yeah, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. <clears throat> in Martin Place. Mm-hmm. That's I nice and central. It. Nice and central. I don't get why you've it's got, in Martin Place. You've got two Western Sydney teams playing in the grand final. Why not just have Fan Fest in fucking Melbourne? It's, uh, and <laughs> I understand that there are some logistics around, you know, holding wow. planned Concord and whatever. Was, Concord but, was booked out. Why would <laughs> that center of excellence was just unavailable? <laughs> but if we're talking about 
grand final, et cetera, and, and trying to activate Sydney Olympic Park. Like the state government, um, I, I will be a little bit sensible here for a moment. The state government is constantly spoken about and constantly had spoken to them that Sydney Olympic Park is essentially a white elephant post the Olympics. There's not a lot that happens there outside of some major events. You know, how can they reactivate the space? And it's time to be gentrified a little bit with a lot of apartments being built and there's a lot of business move, businesses moving in there. But conversely, there's also been businesses moving out of there. Why would you not have Sydney Olympic Park as your activation space for this NRL fan fest? It makes no sense to me that it's at Martin Place. I'd even cop it being over at Moore Park near NRL HQ. But uh, the... I don't get it, Martin Place. That just there's nothing appealing about Martin Place. Yeah, it's weird. Sorry, that's my rant. It's I, I just I can't I can't understand it. I agree. Like what the fuck? Like you when you go to Martin Place, you're like, is this it? I don't understand why people are so pumped up about Martin. Well, it's not people. It's fucking corporate types, and I think it's corporates they love it. Out of, they can walk out of their fucking offices while they're going downstairs getting their fucking twelve dollar coffee. And their, whatever the fuck they've got with the avocado on it, and they can say, "Oh, is that the fucking fan experience?" Go fuck yourselves with your jobs. I've got to ask: does Ma- Has Martin Place been upgraded to have street art? Ah, uh, no. no, no. Oh, it's it's still yeah. a poor man's Melbourne then. Our, our version <laughs> of street art in in uh, Sydney is the smell. <laughs> And Melbourne does Clover, that. Clover wouldn't allow it. <laughs> it's just, yeah, I, I genuinely don't get it. I know that it's school holidays and it should be easier for families to be able to to get in and and do that, but it, it makes no sense to me. I actually think, you know, Sydney Olympic Park is essentially geographically central mm-hmm. for Sydney. It's obviously where the grand final is played. It would make more sense to hold it there. But anyway, I'll get off my soapbox now. No, it, it makes no. sense. And it's like the Battle of the West. Like it, no one's travelling into Martin Place to go and see some shit like that. No. You know what I'd like to see as a leader? Let's mm. get some – well, actually, we can't do it with New South Wales Cup because, you know, we won that on the weekend, so we've got to play again this weekend. Mm. Maybe Jersey Flag. Let's get the Flag boys out, who also won on the weekend, by the way. Um mm. And let's have them jousting up Church Street Mall against some of the Parramatta juniors. I'd love to see that. That would be great jousting. for NRL. Jousting. Let's get that happening. I'd pay money sticks. for that. What if we had Western Sydney? They, they need to do Phoenix. it on Commodores. Yeah. <laughs> like do donuts and in Commodores yeah. and shit like that. Um, hang out in, in the parking lots of McDonald's at <laughs> yeah North at North Parramatta opposite Combank Stadium. Yeah, yeah, just stuff like that. Real Western Sydney stuff. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Just oh. crazy, 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 crazy. Okay, for a bit of bit of uh, essentially teenagers jousting. <laughs> yeah, why not? Street. That's brilliant. I'm all here for the good ideas. I'll take that over Jimmy Barnes actually at half time. Can we have can we have the uh, can we have the two worst teams in the NRL this year have a jousting competition at half time in the grand final? That's how you fix up their squads. (laughs) That would be gone. Wouldn't it be cool if we just like you, you get the wooden spoon right and we sacrifice your best player at half time in the grand final? That's a long process. You got to find something good out of something that was bad. I tell you what, wouldn't it make that? Wouldn't it make teams play harder at the bottom of the ladder? It gives something to play for. Yeah. You know, well, it existence. doesn't though, because what happens if you you're looking for an out on someone's contract? Yeah, but that, that's an out that's permanent though. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well. <laughs> we bring some we bring some mine descendants over from Central America because that they they're good with the sacrifices, and we just sacrifice someone on an altar at half time. Seems as we can't do oh, look, it anymore because of Shanta, we bring it back. <laughs> yeah, Shanta. We're going Ruining to... halftime entertainment since yeah. – what, what what year did we figure out that was? Uh, 
like, yeah, because we worked it out, didn't we? We did work it out, and it didn't take very long for us to work it out either. Was it we nailed it. Game. It, it seems to be taking a while now, though. I know. Yeah, I know, but, but we did it, like, in flight at a game. It was actually brilliant. Oh. Uh. There's anyway. so much hype though around the the grand final entertainment. It's it's got to the point now where um, the NRL is damned if they do and damned if they don't. It doesn't matter what they pick, they will always yield to the people who whinge about it, which means they will never ever satisfy everyone. And they need to stop listening to the people because. You know, but it's what the fans want, Andrew. It's not. <laughs> Yeah, according to the according Landys to is all about the fans. That's what yeah, the fans I want. I was so keen on fucking two point field goals and having points taken off the scoreboard as well. <laughs> and I'm so devastated that Taylor May is not in the finals. That's why I've not watched any of it. No Taylor May, I'm not invested. Fuck it. Look, <laughs> n- nothing says rugby league in Western Sydney like some fucking Scottish drunk drinking and then going out and fucking singing the working class man. To a bunch of people that are like, oh, yeah, my grandfather used to listen to this song. <laughs> Back when it was, it was good. It would be great. He can, yeah. it's the fucking, and in, it, then he can plug his Sony tour while he's going to all the RSL clubs around New South Wales. It would be amazing. Get the but then, on. But it, it was so funny mm. when uh, we're talking about the uh, entertainment last week um, at the game. Because obviously we'd watched Robbie Williams do the AFL Grand Final, and you know we we're waiting for the Panthers South game to start, and just chatting to you know a um, few people around us, saying that okay, so what's Jimmy Jimmy Barnes' set list going to be? So we've got working class man, we have flame trees. He'll do Kaysan. Um, He'll do Kaysan. Oh Kaysan, yeah. So I think we got into four songs, and we we're like. Oh. Yeah. He might also do... Is that why he's got a special guest? Right, so Diesel. So then we're going to have some... Well, that's his brother-in-law. And I see he's also yeah. got his daughter on the card as yeah. well. Yeah, so then, you know, so then Good it was like, oh, so then we're expanding the, the repertoire into, oh, we'll do some, you know, Johnny Diesel songs. Um, uh, no, they won't do any Diesel songs. Diesel just play guitar, but they'll find... No, uh, they I reckon might do, they'll weave something in. They might do um, Elton John's Saturday Night's All Right for Fighting. <laughs> Well, they might try and do the Nickelback version of it, which would be worse. Oh, it was just, <laughs> it was funny because I don't know whether you guys saw, I got into a bit of a back and forth with somebody on Twitter about the grand final entertainment. And I wonder if um, they'll do simply the best. Well, he should by rights. But, you know, I also have issues with people being so attacked. Yes, that was a great campaign, but we kind of need to find a way to move on from that too, to a degree, unless they want that to be the anthem, quote, unquote, in which case make it the anthem. Like let everybody know that's it. We're, we're holding our hats on, hanging our hats on that, so be it. But, um, yeah, this person on Twitter was giving me a bit of a what for because I made a comment about every year the NRL gets this wrong and it's it doesn't matter whether it's wrong for a particular reason, whether it's, it's not the right person or why have we gone with that person or that person is really woke or that person's really old or shit. It's like they forgot to organise entertainment. Let's go to our usual roller decks and wheel out someone doing the RSL circuit, so on and so forth. Um, and this person was like, I don't know why you're so obsessed with international artists and blah, blah, blah. And I, I wrote back and said, I actually don't care either way. I'm one of those fans that I actually don't care about the entertainment. I'm not there for the entertainment. Um, but if you are trying to entice new people to the game, you need to that, – that is a way that you do it. Obviously, you want the product to speak for itself, but that is a, an opportunity to attract different eyeballs because you've got – you know, a couple of years ago we had Macklemore. That was great. Um, you know, and I w- initially I was like, oh, that's a bit of an odd feel. But being at the ground, that was an amazing set, one of the best ever. So – so I can understand why certain decisions are made. But we had Jimmy Barnes like three or four, four or five years ago. I, I have seen Jimmy Barnes in my time of going in the last 10 years going to grand finals. I've seen Jimmy Barnes. So why do I want to see him again in a 10-year period? The thing is, okay, the, the Jimmy Barnes um, selection is one made by someone who hasn't actually organised anything yet. You go, right, who's first off the bench? 
Jay Barnes. Call him and he'll always say yes. It's you know what it is. It's <laughs> it's who's available. I don't know, but when I was walking into the office today, I stepped over the top of Jimmy Barnes. He was sleeping outside in the pool park. <laughs> when I went for a walk down the street, he he gave you made my coffee at the at the coffee shop. Yeah. And then when I walked out and I threw some money to the uh, the homeless bum on the ground, it was Jimmy Barnes again. <laughs> he's just everywhere. Yeah. He's got my, he's got my it, favorite it's... misunderstood lyrics though, with cheap wine and a female goat. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's that's very true. So oh, it's just, but I do feel like every year we get it wrong. It gets, it's just wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong. I've got Thank an you. idea. What? No fucking entertainment. What's what a waste of money. It mascot is a race. it is a lot of money. Mascot races. Imagine if they said. Imagine if they made it the world mascot fucking Olympics hey. at halftime. They bring over Clutch Bear from the Rockets. They bring over whatever the fuck the weird thing is, that green weird thing in the baseball. And will, they have will the uh, will the mad like, squirrel from Baklavi come over? Yeah, bring over the mad squirrel. He will win. Do they have mascots in England? I don't think they've got mascots in England, do they? Um, there's a giant. Seen. There's a giant at Huddersfield. Is there? He's just got a really big head. Leave. If, his name is Earl Crabtree. All right, and he doesn't appreciate. <laughs> hey, it. I've got no. I'm not dissing Earl. Yeah, um, he's tight with Earl. He's a good man. I think it should just be all mascots. Well, it, put it this way, right? Just say the NRL halftime entertainment was Snoop Dogg. No, people... is he doing menu log ads? Because I don't want to say that shit. <laughs> <laughs> menu log gets him over, and he just does menu log. Because that's what would happen. You know that, right? It would be some partnership with Menu Log, and we'd have Snoop Dogg and Katy Perry doing their menu log ad. That Katy Perry menu log ad just makes me want to destroy the planet. <laughs> yeah. Menu logs just doing fail after fail. That makes me oh. want to stuff all of the plastic bags down the throats of dolphins. <laughs> oh, Jesus. That escalated. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thanks, menu log. I just mm. You dolphin shit. murderers. Dolphins are idiots. Well, they're not as dumb as horses. Prove it. A horse can jump over a fence. Can a dolphin? Nope. Can't even get out the water. A fucking a horse can swim. Hey, a dolphin's smart enough to know that being on land is where they get killed. Yeah, but they can't do a it. A horse turns into fucking dog food and tennis tennis racket strings. Uh, hello, have you ever eaten fucking tuna? What do you think dolphins end up being? Dolphins. <laughs> Tuna's a fish. Yeah, but they get into the tuna. It's called bycatch. It's the, it's the new rage. You got to be open minded. Dude, this has taken a turn that I was not expecting. What do you mean not expecting? <laughs> we used to do this shit all the time. <laughs> Same. Oh, There's no wait. segue available to take this back on track either. By the way. No. There's a. One. To, just to inform Andrew, there's a football t- game on this weekend. Hey, Andrew. <laughs> It's got the grand final. Oh, yeah, yeah. The Super Bowl okay, grand final so, was the last week I heard. Oh, move that was on. fucking dire. Oh, my God. I, I heard it was one team that's won a heap of premierships in the Super League versus another team that's won a heap of premierships in the Super League. Yeah. I was the, so excited. I the, said, the, Well, cool. have. Go. Sorry. I said, the, I said on Twitter, I said, yawn, and someone went, Oh, I'll have a cry then. I went, I'm not crying. I'm bored. Mm. Yeah. And St. Helens fans were like, Is this the greatest St. Helens team of all time? No. And I just said no, and it upset so many fucking cent- – like I said, I can name five St. Helens teams better than this, and they were like, well, name them. And so I did. And then uh, – <laughs> and then I just had so many St. Helens fans that were upset, and they thought I was upset. And it's like, no, I'm just answering questions yeah. about is this team any good. So what I guess, did you, I'm did you name five St. Helens teams that all had Kieran Cunningham in them? <laughs> you know what? All but one of them did. Uh, see, I'm not far off. You know? See, I feel like, though, Freaky, by virtue of just you being you, it wouldn't have mattered what your answer would be. People would have been outraged. Probably. He but, does do hmm. that. He, he is very angry. I'm he's not, a very polarising person. Yeah, I'm very, a polarising, but I'm not angry. Hey, he's, just always, he's always aggressive and angry on social media. See, he's always been really... Oh, you, you should see him in the coffee line at the football, let me tell you. Oh, don't get me <laughs> you want to see, see aggressive... <laughs> 
don't get between the man and his coffee and donuts. Yeah, that's why he's playing <laughs> yeah. swords. You want to say, no, just mention how they much would come in handy. <laughs> get out of my. So speaking of room. speaking of St Helens, mm-hmm. apparently they have come out and they have dared Penrith and Parramatta not to chicken out of a World Club challenge this year. Yeah, it's, it's pretty good for St Helens to talk about that shit. They've never left fucking their own shores ever. When they do, they lose to the French teams. And it's like, well, okay, you now St Helens, okay, you've got you've got four months at the very least to book some fucking plane tickets. And until they book plane tickets, just shut up, you know, just shut up. And they're like, oh, well, are you going to pay for us to come over? It's like, do you know how hard it is? to make people in Australia come out to watch your fucking third-rate team play. Do you reckon the uh, the like, media guy who who said he had no sympathy for the Panthers who fans couldn't get to the uh, game, do you reckon he'd have the same attitude towards St. Helens not coming out to Australia to play in the World Club Challenge? My well, guess is no. It's, it's, I just look St. Helens. They're a little team, okay? They're not going to get money. If you want to play us, you come over here and you enjoy the experience, okay? But you're not a draw. You're not getting money like you're a draw. Why don't you send over the, your flag team? And we, they'd still they, get pumped by Penrith flag. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, send over the mm. flag team. The Saints can still have their, 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 their game. They can still lose, as they'd expect to do. That's so what they do best when it comes so to World Cup Challenge matches. Saying. Fucking Lomax is a really good halfback. I saw somebody saying if you if you swapped Lomax onto the West Tigers, they'd be a better team. Like, <laughs> no, they wouldn't. They'd be terrible. Gosh. Brody Croft won their Player of the Year last week in in Super League. I'm not even joking. Did he really? Yeah, Brody did Croft. Did. Steel, Man of Steel, 2022. He couldn't even get a place in the Broncos' wooden spoon side. <laughs> wow! Oh, fucking long. Um, so in in other news, I'm going to move along. I felt like that was really triggering, which was exactly why I dropped it in there. Wasn't but um, it was a bit triggering for Freaky. He started really going off there. I like it. Well, Saint, um, Helens, Saint Helens are known for for blowing glass because it's a, a big glass area. <laughs> Mate, no, no comment. No, it really so, is. They're known for. Their- for blowing glass. Yeah, it's, it's a big <laughs> industry there. Glass, but anyway. <laughs> oh, God. Um, so I'm on the NRL website, mm-hmm. just uh, having, a bit of a, having a bit of a look at some of these articles, um, and I haven't clicked on any of them. These are purely headlines. And there's an article with a photo of Wonga Blake, and it says, quote, you can't prepare how Blake plans to handle Cleary's bombs. Well, I think you've just answered the question uh, in the headline, uh, and clearly he can't prepare. So, you know, so I don't know whether, it, it don't know whether I need to he, read that. That says how he plans to deal with Cleary's bombs while also saying you can't prepare for them. What's Correct. he doing? What's he doing? <laughs> exactly. Is he just watching a videotape go on? Just don't – I just need to do better. It was funny. I was talking to – I've been talking to a few people about this and I thought Cleary will most likely start the game with a similar game plan and just target Wonga Blake. You'd be stupid to not given how much he cracked the bed in week one of the finals under those bombs. And then what will happen is Parramatta will put players around – him to help him. So Gutherson will probably start shifting across a little bit more. The centers will start, you know, shifting across a little bit more. And that's when Luai or Cleary will just start chipping over the top. So I, I can see what's going to happen because you're not going to chip to, uh, or you're not going to bomb to Sebo's wing, let's be honest. Um, but I, I love it. You can't prepare. Well, then why are you playing professional football? Is, is that not part of your job? And as a winger, like I'm, I'm struggling to understand that stupid quote. Mm. Anyway, yeah. moving on. I, I'm, I'm um, happy to hear that he doesn't know about preparation. Hey, it's pretty. <laughs> I, do, I think. Look, if they when they run out on the field, I'd just be saying it to all of the players on his side of the field. Just talk to him the whole game about don't drop it, don't you drop it, you'll drop the grand final. That's all I'd be doing the whole time. 
Yeah. I mean, and how's Ivan Cleary? I love it. He's obviously wanting as much salt with the uh, eels as he does with, as he has with the West Tigers. Ooh, he yeah. was uh, he was quoted as saying, "Eels don't have the mental edge to win." Yeah, that's, I like just, I like it. He's just spitting facts, though. Let's be honest. Well, that's true. I like it. <laughs> um, what else is here? The Kamikaze Kid. How Kenny and Appy plan to unsettle the eels. So what, okay, free key, here you go. I was going to say, what's great about this, okay, is that all these journalists are claiming that they've figured out what the players are planning to do to unsettle the opposition, as if they're going to know. Mm. Yes. As if the players are going to come out and say, oh, here's our game plan, don't tell Parramatta. <laughs> you know what? It's okay, Parramatta players can't read, you'll be fine. They, they're going to target Nathan Cleary. No one's ever done that before. No. It's such... well, what did you? Well, the quote I saw today was, um, I think it was from Sean Lane. It says, if we all do our job, then Cleary won't be an issue. Okay, mate, because people have been able to shut him down all season. Yeah. yeah Morlons. It's a strange one. It's a strange one. Morlons. So does that mean that every time they've lost a game, they haven't done their job? And if that's the case, how do they still get paid for not working? Correct. 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 Mm. Correct. Um, Overpaid. So, Paras over the cap. Honestly. <laughs> if that's the case, the Tigers players are well under the cap because none of them have been yes. working all year. So essentially, they're the only team that's under the cap. So you know the Tigers are premiers. There's a bombshell. Very funny. Um, <laughs> so oh, honestly, I just it, it just the salary. Don't even talk to me about salary cap. I'm sick of having conversations with people about salary cap this week. Um, <laughs> Off the back of Buds Rothfield saying that both teams, I will give him a little bit of fairness, both teams are fielding um, fielding teams that are over the salary cap. But then if you actually read the article, it was essentially a little bit of a money ball situation. So just because all the players combined are probably worth more than the salary cap, they're not being paid more than the salary no, cap. I was like, Seriously, Buzz Seriously, Buzz, calm your farm, mate. Dickhead doesn't go understand back to the it. RSL club and have your shandy and be quiet. These, these journalists at News Limited do not understand how balance sheets work and they don't understand how the salary cap works. Yet they write about it all the fucking time. All the time. It, you'd think that if they could work out how much, how to like add up how much a football team is spending, that they could also add up how many standard drinks they're consuming before they get in their cars. <laughs> Next. So, uh, moving along. Um, so, Freaky in particular, given you are also a Panthers fan. Yes. But also keen to hear your views on this, Andrew, as a neutral. Thoughts on, in recent weeks, Ivan Cleary starting with Mitch Kenny, with then Coruscant coming off the bench. I, I don't and like And do you think he will do that this week? I don't the know. the concept behind it I see is he's trying to save Coruscant for that opening twenty minutes of the game where it's just bash and barge. Um, I think it kind of bit him on the ass a little bit against South because South managed to get off to a pretty decent start and Panthers line speed was a bit slow for them. Mm-hmm. Um, I wouldn't, if I was him, um, start with Kenny at hooker. I'd, I'd rather I'd rather have Coruscant there. You need that line speed early. If you get on the front foot against Parramatta, they are more likely to struggle chasing points than they are if they're in front. Um, I just feel they they play off their own good performance a lot better. But if they've got to start chasing points, they tend to get a bit distracted. And Moses would pull out too many um, silly plays too frequently in an, in an effort to try and create something and try and get points on the board. And, yeah, I think what you need to do if you're Penrith is you've got to get the first try and you need to have your team... Your, your absolute best lineup on the field to start with. So, yeah, yeah I'd, I'd be starting with Chorus there. Look, the only way that it works, because Mitch Kenny isn't very good out of dummy half. His service is not good. He's, it just doesn't work, right? He's, he's basically and, Darren Centre. He, he pretty much, ooh, yeah. He's good at ooh, passing ooh, the ball off the deck, ooh. and he's very good defensively. <laughs> no, no, think about it, okay? He's, he's very good defensively in the middle, and he's very good at getting the ball off the deck at the play of the ball. But as far as running out of dummy half goes, he just doesn't because he's not good at it. He's like a, a a very rich man's Josh Hodgson, except that he plays football still. He does uh, drop the ball. He picks the ball up, 
and then he decides what he's going to do with it, and it's not very good. Um, I think that if he does go that way, he can't wait 20 minutes to bring Appy on. I think that it would need to be something like he leaves him out there for like the first 10 minutes and then he brings Appy on because in the last game, it really did kill them early on in that match. Um, mm-hmm. it, yeah, but I look, generally, like I get the the concept of it, but I think generally it it could be a little bit of outsmarting yourself, you know. Um, but then again, you look at the results and I can see where, you know, the coach is like, look at, look at what we're doing at the end of games compared to other mm. things, what we're doing in the second half. And it's not like Coruscant's unable to handle that sort of contact though. And also the way the Panthers defensive structure works, they could hide him quite easily in that mm. defensive line. So he doesn't get targeted too heavily and it'd be fine. I don't know why he's sort of erring that way, unless maybe in the previous weeks he was doing it just to try and save him from doing a little bit of extra work to make sure that he's he's good to go for the grand final. But I don't know. It, it seems odd. Do you think I'd... there's also – there's potentially also an element of um, trying to get used to life without Coruscant next season? Possibly. Maybe, but I don't know if you'd do that during the finals, though. No. Well, you know, no better way to learn. Yeah. I don't I don't think oh, – I, th- I, do, I think it's a case of – let the softening up period play yeah. out, and then once that's, you've got some tired forwards, you bring Coruscant on for an injection. That's all it is. Also, I don't think I don't think um, Clear is going to go with Kenny at at hooker for very long at all next year, if at all. I don't think it's the best no. move for them for their spine. So, who would you have? I don't know. It's just as we said, I don't think what what Kenny provides at dummy half helps the the rest of the spine do their job too well. So, you know, maybe you could bring in any old person to go there who's just got a little bit of a running game. Um, yeah, you know, just there's got to be someone else they can put there who's essentially they don't even have to be too great defensively, but if they're good, good, good line speed, they've got good enough defense and their passing game is solid, that's going to be enough because they're not going to need to be a world-class hooker with that, you know, with Cleary in the side. Um, they don't need to be great. They just need to be able to get the forwards rolling forward comfortably. That's basically all they've yeah. got to do. And I don't think Kenny's proven that he can get that done for them. So I don't know. There's, I, I have not really looked too much at what the Panthers' depth is like at hooker either. Um, they've not shown too much of it either. Yeah, that, look, they've got a, a, a young bloke called uh, Sonny Luke who's uh, I think that I, my feeling is he will probably start at hooker next year and they'll just try and bring him into the Appy Clarissau role. Um, but who, who knows? Look, the way that the Panthers club is going at the moment, uh, like I don't really worry too much about like who they're going to replace who with. Um, mm. The only one that really worried me was uh, Kikau. And I think that Garner will come in and, and, if he is used, I think they'll use him as a centre. But if they decide to put him in that kick out role, I think he'll do a really good job. Actually, they're so spoiled for talent in that back row. In terms of depth, it's not funny. Mm. That like any of those players in New South Wales Cup or Flag can just easily move up without issues next year. Yeah, I think I think last year. You could probably say the Panthers had, you know, they probably had probably one and a half forward packs worth of depth, and that's been lowered a little bit this year. But I think next year it'll be beyond that. I think we'll have two forward packs worth of NRL talent in depth. Mm. depth I mean, we do lose, we do lose a few next season, mm. um, particularly from those lower grades. Mm. There's a few, few um, moving on, but. You, they're just they're just producing them. Mm. So, so how do you see this week's game playing out? Panthers by twenty. <sighs> that is some confidence. I like it. Yeah, it's it's one of those things that you know. Sometimes I don't, know, I don't have to say for you guys, but it's for me. There's sometimes you go into watching a grand final, and you just feel absolute one hundred percent confidence that you know you just know that this team's going to win. And I've only felt it twice before, and that was 
2005, I was so confident that the Tigers were going to win that grand final. I chose to work that day and not watch it at all. And I was living in Sydney at the time. And wow. They, I would have gone the other way if I was that confident. No, it was because the the Cowboys had played the hardest run through the final series. The Tigers just sort of waltzed in. The Cowboys, was they'd played just grand final after grand final. They were, they were the better team on paper, um, if we're going to be honest. But they were so worn out from all the big matches they played. And the Tigers just weren't. They were just fresher. And it was as simple as that. The other one was mm. 2016. I don't know why, but for some reason I just felt that the Sharks were just going to win that grand final and not once did I feel like that was going to be anything other. And it was odd because it's not like they had the wood on the storm either. I just, I don't know what it was, but this year it feels the same. I just can't see how Paramount is going to be competitive with, with Penrith. Yeah, I get that. I, my head says it'll be a little bit similar to the, the other two finals games where it's pretty you know close early on and then they just sort of walk away with the game because they've worn the opposition team down um the big thing is that they need to shut down the offloads by the paramount mm. Eels. if they do that i don't know what the eels plan b will be um and it's just relying on their defense like if their defense is solid the only player in the in the panther side that worries me is charlie staines uh, he was absolutely diabolical last week in defence, and I, they will definitely target him and his defensive side of the field. But you know, it's th- this the way that I'm looking at it is like this Panthers team is so good that if the Eels beat them, well, what what can you say? They they just deserve it. Um, I I'm not nervous about the match. Um. And I think that the Panthers will have got a lot out of beating the Eels in that first finals match. And I just wonder how the Eels are going to come back from that. The other thing is, too, that the... And I think you mentioned it to me, Nadine, uh, when we were direct messaging during the game uh, on the weekend. The Panthers were really off in that first. Mm. And maybe the, the weeks off had finally taken their toll on them. But in that second half, they were fantastic. Um, I, I wonder if just blowing the cobwebs out, they've got that game under their belt now and they'll just be on for the full 80 minutes. Um, my head says the Panthers should win it, but I, grand finals are 50-50, you know. You never know. There's been pl- plenty of grand finals I've watched where you think, oh, this is going to be a, a pretty one-sided match and the other team wins it, you know, so... Um, no one would have expected that the Sea Eagles were going to win 40-0. Um, the mm, Paramount and one was supposed to just be coronated in that game. So we'll see. We'll find out. That's why they play the games. That's right. This is right. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just – the only way Paramount is going to have a chance in this game is if, if they do get the offloads away, they don't just go one out with the second phase play. They spread that shit across the back line. Mm-hmm. But the only way they're going to have any success against Penrith is they can make that defensive line stretch as far as possible to make them condense. And if they've got them going sideways a lot, that's the only way you're going to create, find a hole in there. But you've got to do it a lot for a bunch of the game. Because mm-hmm. um, the one thing the Panthers have more than anything else that you just cannot do anything against is they have patience. We saw yeah. it against South the other day. They could have imploded after having the, what was it, two tries disallowed? Mm. They didn't. They just sat there and went, it's okay. She will come to us. We'll be fine. They just go through, they do their jobs, and then sure enough, as soon as an opportunity comes, half a chance, boom, they fucking smash it. It's what they do. And so Parramatta's discipline is the one thing that they need to make sure is on point because if it's not, that'll be enough for them to, uh, to, to lose the game. Yeah, yeah and, and I think that that's why the inclusion of Nathan Brown is just blowing Panthers' minds. They're like, how will we ever control ourselves when Nathan Brown's on the field? All I could do is go out there and niggle him. <laughs> it's just like, niggle him. This, hey, mate, do you, are you, have you got your mind back after that young fellow at the West Tigers completely destroyed you a few years ago? <laughs> He's, he smashed you so bad you can't even play for the uh, the the eels in a regular basis anymore. How long have you been on the bench for? How long have you been in in Reggie's for? Smashed right. by Bloor. 
They're acting like he's fucking Gordon Tallis in 96. <laughs> like, calm down. <laughs> you just got to... <laughs> You just got to pick at him like that, and he'll start doing hard runs and trying to do hard tackles, and then he'll give away a few penalties here and there, and then you got him. Mm. It's simple stuff. You don't even need to get nasty or anything like that. Just remind him of, of one time that he failed. Fucking forwards hate it. So it's fair to say, Andrew, that you, not me on a dean, but you are saying the Eels are going to get fucked up and exactly what they deserve. Yeah, I'm going Penrith 32 to 12. Wow, that's arrogant. That's <laughs> arrogant. I like it though. I'm not gonna <laughs> not gonna lie. All right. yeah. I won't even look I'll, I'll go nuts, okay. I'll even say it'll be twelve all half time. Oh wow. Interesting. Penrith's just destroy him in the second half. Yeah. Well, Nathan, do you Nathan, think Nathan Brown will get binned in the second half? About the let's say about the fifty ninth minute. Penrith will just put on three tries. <laughs> Done. Um, do you think the trip to Townsville will end up being a factor for um, for Parramatta? No, not really. No, I think the thing that would be a factor for them would just be Moses hasn't really been, and understandably so, hasn't been 100% in the games the last two weeks. And I say understandably so. He lost his grandmother, I think it was, or grandfather. Um, and then a few days later, his first child was born. And I went through a similar process when my first child was born. It fucks your head a lot. You don't know whether you're supposed to be happy, sad, or whatever. And it's hard to focus on what you've got to do. It. And I know it may sound a bit weird, but it, it really does sort of throw you a little bit. Mm. Um, and you kind of see little bits of it in games where he just sort of disappears for a few minutes and then you'll come out and you'll just do some sort of going through the motions play, just kicking kick to the corner and hoping something works. You just think, Mitch, I've seen what happens when you run the ball and you take on the line. No one can fucking stop you. Why are you doing this, like, passenger shit for? But it's That's the thing that I think will be the biggest worry for the Eels. They've got to make sure they get his head in the game. And I don't know how you go about it. it it's a... It's an unfortunate situation that he's he's in mentally there. Um, full credit to him for uh, I'll, I'll be honest. Full credit respect to him for playing on through all of that and yeah. doing doing enough to get his team to the grand final. Um, that would not have been easy. So credit to him there. But I think um, if you're not 100 percent on for a grand final, especially against this very patient Panther side, that could be that could be enough. And who do you think will be the – who will just take the game by the scruff of the neck and just own it for both teams? Um, Dylan Brown, Nathan Cleary, uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if Coruscant as well has, has an absolute massive game. If if you had to guess who was going to have more running metres? Two o. Or Gutherson. Two o. Gutherson, no, has, Gutherson has walking meters. He'd have more walking meters. <laughs> Come on now. Are you seriously going to pick to o over Gutherson? Gutherson's yeah. always running and ball himself. Yeah. Two o will have more running meters than the Eels back three combined. Oh, well, wow. get on that. I like. They'd be juicy odds. Can we <laughs> bet on that? <laughs> that would be awesome. Hey. Gamble he, responsibly, but those how, odds would be amazing. How many times has he had 300 run metres in a game? He's, if only there a, was a website that would tell us that, Andrew. Oh, well, I don't actually do that one, unfortunately. But, oh. yeah, he's, um, he's done it like several times in his career already, which yeah. is just fucking insane. And yeah. so all you're asking there is the back three for the for the Eels have to do 100 metres each. 100 metres each. To keep up with him. And I go, do you really think Cuffins is going to put in 100 metres? Mm. So if the two wingers do, say, 110, 120 each, which is a pretty decent game for a winger, <laughs> Gutherson still needs to chip, chip in about 80 metres, dawdling across field and walking and throwing the ball to other people to do the hard work. You know, the thing that got, <laughs> the thing that got me last week was how many times Gutherson was out of position at fullback, eh? Huh? Yes. The, the same the, thing happened with Latrell as well mm-hmm. in, in the Panthers-Souths game. With Latrell, it's because... Um, the South structure doesn't really fully support 
Ilias. Is it Ilias at, at half? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they don't fully support him too much. So a lot of the play still revolves around get the ball to Walker. And so you find that Latrell tends to play as a second 5 eighth more than an actual fullback. And it means that when it comes to defending, he's out of position to start with. Mm. So he's got to go back to wing and then work his way into the back of the field during the last two plays of a set. So if a team kicks early, they'll get him out of position every time. With Gutherson, um, sometimes he feels, I think, that if Moses isn't playing very well, Gutherson sometimes takes it upon himself to try and inject himself into the playmaking duties in the middle there so as to support Moses and not make um, Brown go out of position to help out. And sometimes it works okay against the lesser sides, but against stronger teams, he often gets caught out of position defensively because he's in the just in the complete wrong spot, especially if there's a quick turnover. He'll be in the line when he should be you know, back further somewhere, sitting 10 metres behind the line or something. Um, but, yeah, it's it's very interesting how those two sides work like that. But, yeah, I think and the difference between two is um, is uh, Latrell is good enough to be able to fix it more often than not before anything really bad happens, whereas, you know, Gutho. <laughs> not elite. Not elite. <laughs> <laughs> and um, what at what play or how quickly into the start of the game? Pardon me. Um, do you think Moses and Gutherson start waving their hands around, calling for a penalty that doesn't exist? <laughs> oh, Moses will be doing it before the before the coins the coins tossed. <laughs> <laughs> when he when he sleeps at warm up. <laughs> when he sleeps at night, I've heard he's uh, he's he's giving himself a few concussions at night because he's just sleeping with his arms waving around all the time and just absolutely you know, accidentally knocks himself oh, in the head. Good. Honestly, we've had to move pictures off there... the wall and vases off the side tables near the bed because he keeps knocking shit over and putting his arms in the air. Um, Gutherson honestly, just drives me mental. Gutherson just goes the hands up once. Um, yeah, it's Moses funny because... looks like he's trying to take flight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Moses is he's, he's animated. Yeah, but, uh, Munster's, Munster's like that as well. Munster's yeah. a bit of a hand flapper. The Gutherson one is a bit more like when a player's offside and he, or he's done the wrong thing and he puts his hands in the air to go invisible. <laughs> you know, the, it's, it's to be both guilty and invisible. Not me, sir. I'm not here. That's kind of more the Gutherson one. There's not much. Um, there's not much emotion in it. He's not really putting in. He's not committed to it. Yeah. He just does it because he sees Moses doing it. Oh, if we all do it, then maybe be like, you know, when the whole slips cord and goes up in cricket. Oh, that's, that's got to be out of the cash. We'll put our hands in the air. But, you know, it's, <laughs> he's just doing it because he's following. I like it. Gutherson goes up to the referee and he starts to explain why it, just a normal knock-on was not a knock-on. It's like, can you just stop talking, you fucking idiot, and go back and hang around the rest of the footballers? <laughs> Actually, I want to I wanna ask both his Quickly, that um that first try the Parramatta scored last week, that was a forward pass, yeah. Oh, yes, miles. Yeah. See, the thing is, I don't. Everyone will say that he threw the ball backwards. He got, yeah, he did, but his back was facing the line that he's supposed to be running towards. So if you throw <laughs> it backwards that way, it's going forwards. And when I looked mm. at it, I went, that's clearly gone forwards. Mm. It was so forward. It wasn't funny. That was, um, I can't believe they just let that go. I assume it so was what did, as well. What did Annesley – so Annesley this week said that there were four errors. Well, yeah, yeah. there was probably more, but there were four clear errors in officiating on the weekend. So there was that forward pass. I think there was another um, one for a try for Parramatta as well. And I think the, Yeah, the, there was. The issues he found would, would have been enough if they'd have been called correctly. It would have meant that the Cowboys would have won the game. Correct. And then obviously there was the um, – Charlie Staines, no try because they ruled that uh, on the field that Luai had run an obstruction. Um, oh, was that the one where Luai was about three and a half k's away from what was going on? Correct. Um, you know, he did run behind a play, but then he threw this pass, which, you know, the other six players would have had the opportunity to stop the try, but sure, whatever. Um, and then the Stephen Crichton, no try, where they ruled that he essentially knocked the ball on in goal, but... You know, with the giant screens at the stadium, we could all see he grounded that ball. Mm. Um, so, you know, at least in the Panthers' case, it didn't impact the result of the game. But obviously in the uh, Parramatta Cowboys game, it really did. And even though the Parramatta try off the forward pass was the first try of the game and there was ample opportunity for 
the Cowboys to come back from that. That was really against the run of play to a degree. The Cowboys had had all the ascendancy but hadn't been able to capitalise. And, you know, there's obviously a mindset shift when you are essentially dudded and you know that you're dudded. You've not been outplayed. You've not been outmaneuvered, outsmarted. You know, it's not a poor defensive read. It's You were dudded. You know, that that's a crappy thing to have to come back from and it you know you just need the mental toughness to be able to do so and you know they were clearly not able to bounce back well, from I mean, that really i'm going to be savage in the team but you know as far as the cowboys go karma karma there we go <laughs> it sucks you know they could have just said you know what tigers we'll let you have that win as long as we get to uh review a decision and get one overturned later on in the season no we would have gotten you know what fine we still yes. get the spoon. Everything's nice. <laughs> <laughs> no. So it sucks, though, that, you know, you're in semifinals and they're the kinds of things that you're missing. I mean, that's – it is a joke. And especially that forward pass, you can almost excuse Atkins for not ruling on that given where he was positionally on the field. You cannot excuse the lines person. Mm. No. Because they were there. They were on the spot right yeah. there. They are in the frame. How they miss that, I will you never can't know. Even, you can't excuse the bunker. They review every try. But you can't rule on a forward pass. Which is stupid. It, correct. And, now it's and so now it's just stupid. opening up a whole conversation again it about is, what should the bunker stupid. be involved what's, in or not. What's the point of having a system in place that allows you to to verify whether a try is okay or not if you're just going to say, oh, we're not going to rule on X, Y, and Z because, because camera angles reasons. are deceptive. <laughs> and opinions are subjective. <laughs> if we can have <laughs> right. a world record line when we're doing swimming from a stationary camera at one point in the pool, mm. I, I think there's opportunity. So they, yeah. they just need to look at it. That They need to actually – that has got to be – the catalyst for them to seriously look at how they get technology involved for forward passes. But there's only a two axis dynamic in the, the, the you know, the world record line in the um, piano smash in the Olympics. <laughs> it, it's, yeah, it's it's just so difficult. Like the only way that I think you could do it is if you had some. Don't you dare give me the Paul Kent fly in a car analogy because I, I may flip a table. He, what's the yeah, what's that oh one? have you not heard him no, okay no, no, sorry no. finish we, we finish your story <laughs> no no I, hang on I, I'm too it, is, it, there's a fly in a car <laughs> first, first of all okay first of all let's get into the full camp one cent okay alright I'm there okay <laughs> you are you sure you're there <laughs> very, everything's very blurry I don't know why okay and are you angry um, I'm talking a lot as well. It's angry. very blurry. I'm talking a lot, and there's a fly in the car. Um, angry. Yeah, I'm angry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and so are I you start, yelling unnecessarily? Probably. I start the car. I back into a bin. That's good when start, I good realize start. there's a fly in the car. Then what happens? James, James, so, on your bonnet. Yep. <laughs> James, yep <laughs> right. We're good. We can go. <laughs> So I've heard, um, I will not do this justice, but he has argued this point so many times that, the you know, um, if, and it goes back to your point, Frankie, about perception and different angles and, and things like that. So if there is a fly in a car and both are travelling at the same speed but the car slams its brakes on, the fly will still go forward but it hasn't moved forward. Has moved forward. <laughs> <laughs> the fly didn't put the brakes on at the same fucking time, did it? <laughs> wow. <laughs> he's a fucking he's a fucking genius. He's working on a different level. <laughs> I'm glad I've made you both laugh. I can't believe you guys haven't heard that before. That is fucking brilliant. <laughs> 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 I just think that any anytime somebody tries to explain physics, right, and they start off with listen, there's a fly and he's in a car It's like okay, just stop there. You're good. I'm just gonna agree with you, you idiot. <laughs> oh 
Have another beer. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I'm willing to say that that explanation doesn't pass the pub test. <laughs> maybe it does, and that's the well, problem. <laughs> maybe, maybe the fly was drunk. Oh maybe my the God. fly was drunk, sorry. It took a while for it to register. <laughs> oh. Oh. I feel like it's... the end of his. Uh, I feel like the end of it. He's like in his head. The fly turns around and says, "What just left brakes on you yet?" <laughs> he does a point. If the fly end up hitting the back window, because the fly has put on its brakes and then gone backwards. Yeah, you know, fair enough. <laughs> but it's the fucking window. Yeah. There you go. I've taught you something. That's, that's like, uh, you know, the movie, oh. I think it's Young Einstein, where they're talking about general relativity, and he says that if there's a train moving at the speed of light and you move from the back carriage to the front carriage, uh, you're moving faster than light. <laughs> and he just he just upsets the guy he's talking to. He just gets pissed <laughs> off. <laughs> maybe that's maybe that's where um, Kenty got his, uh, his physics degree from, watching Young Einstein. Possibly. Possibly, yeah. I know it's where I got mine from. I mean, it would make sense given it was all about making beer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my yes, God. The best there thing, you go. The best thing in that movie is that when he he finally he finally breaks the atom, and he makes beer with bubbles in it, and his dad and it's the first ever beer with bubbles in it, and his dad gets it and he goes, "Well, it's got a good head on it too. Like he, it should have always had a good head on the beer, you know." <laughs> Like just the best. It's so subtle, but it's so good. <laughs> oh. oh, far out! Wow. That's hilarious. That was no. um, yeah. <laughs> what if I've Paul totally Kent's lost head. my train of thought? Yeah. What if Paul <laughs> Kent's head? He's actually talking about the movie The Fly, and it's Jeff Globe. What's his name? Globe. Jeff, Jeff, Gold, Gold, Jeff yeah. Goldblum. Jeff Goldblum. And, but that's who he's talking about. He's not actually talking about a fly. He's probably talking about both movies, and he's got to be confused along the way, and he's just thrown a car racing one in there as well because there's a car in there. He's, he's meshing movies together. He is. He's made a point somewhere, though. Was yeah. he holding a golf stick when he said that, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't that part of the show. Uh, look, I saw it on the on the TV the other day. I turned the TV on and it just came up. NRL 360 was on, and and Nasta handed Kenty a golf stick and Kenty held it while he whinged about something, and you could barely see the golf stick, and then that was the end of the segment. I went, the fuck was that about? What's he on the golf club for? Because it's part of the – they've got a sponsorship deal with somebody, and they tee off on a topic. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. That's dumber than the fucking fly. I want to see, as they're passing that golf club around, though, someone smacked somebody in the head with it. Now, yeah. that's TV. All of them. <laughs> All of them need to be hit in the head with it. Oh, that's too funny. Yeah. Far yeah. out. Very good. They, oh, dear. They, I was going to say they could combine the golf clubs with the uh, the momentum in the car. but Yeah, she threw the golf club out the window when you put the brakes on. Yeah, that was already done by Tiger Woods' ex-wife. Oh, that's true. And it went through the front <laughs> windscreen, didn't it? So it went forward. Mm. <laughs> oh, well, that's been, God. That's been, that's been done. Too funny. Um, so, Freaky, are you going to the game on the weekend? No, no, I'm not. I'll be watching on TV. I'm going. Because got... you're antisocial, I know that. Yeah, there's there's humans at the game. Look, I, I was I I was going to buy tickets and then I didn't. Right? And no I, sympathy. I, well, I was hoping to get sympathy from some sociopaths. Done. And it just didn't work out for me. What can I say? Done. You need a, you needed a golf club and a fly. Uh, you get none. It, it it didn't work oh. out. But no, I've, I've got uh, I, I'm all set for the for the grand final. I've got some drinks in. I'm not going to get smashed because I want to remember the game. There was a few grand finals there in the like I, there was three or four of them. I don't really remember. Um, but the Panthers ones I like to remember. So I'm not going to get hammed. You will have a solid plan. Yeah, oh, well, after the game, I probably, yeah, I probably will. Because I'll be so pumped up and stuff. Although it depends, because if we win, I might jump in the car and start driving around. Parramatta? Not Parramatta. Fucking driving around Parramatta sucks. 
Yeah, but it, it sucks less if you go there as a winner of, against them in a grand final. True, I could just go around press my Dixie horn. That'd be great. <laughs> just put all your Panthers gear on, then just drive to all of the Maccas in Parramatta. I just order order just one. Just North Parramatta's. Just North Parramatta's. That's it. Yeah. I just just buy one item every time you go through the drive thru and then go back in half an hour later on. Do you see your Panthers won the grand final? I go for the Panthers. Isn't it great? <laughs> you just go back around and just thought, oh, I'll have another small fry, thanks. You just go in. <laughs> just keep doing it. That's a good idea. It's, um, yeah, well, obviously, I mean, I'm not sure Parramatta Leagues Club or what they're doing, but I know Panthers um, is members only on mm-hmm. Sunday because they're expecting such large crowds, mm-hmm. um, which will be interesting because um, when we win and you've got half of the stadium emptying, wanting to probably go back to the Leagues Club and the Leagues Club is already going to be full, that has disaster written all over it, not going to lie. <laughs> it will be fascinating to see how they manage that. Well, they put something on at the um... – at the Panthers footy ground? I've not seen anything yet. I know that, again, I know that the Eels are creating a live site at the stadium. You would think that they would have to create a live site at Bluebet Stadium, but I, I've not seen anything online to indicate that that is happening at this pa- stage. Pa- Bluebet to, stadium. To a certain extent, it's <laughs> got to be like, is there... Uh-oh. What's up, fella? Uh-oh. It, to a certain extent, I guess there's, uh, you know, if you're a club, you don't want to set up your celebration and then, like, it be bad karma, you know what I mean? Like I saw on the weekend for the, the South versus Panthers game, Clover Moore was saying how that they've spent money so that the uh, Rabbitohs fans can celebrate at Redfern Oval. And I saw that and I was like, oh, that's not good, you know? Yeah. It's... um. Look, it, it, it's a oh look, it's a great problem to have. Let's be mm. honest. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a really good problem to have, um, and there are so many different events happening. Like there's a grand final lunch happening on Friday at the club. Um, they're doing a grand final brunch on Sunday morning, so people could go and do the grand final brunch and then head out to the game. Um, they've also got ticketed like a, a ticketed event in the club, which gives exclusive access to a certain area, like a certain area with a big screen and stuff like that. I think it's down in the backyard area of the club. Um, you know, so th- there's a lot going on. I think it's, you know, Panthers are fortunate that they've got actually such a large licensed premise to be able to do stuff. Yeah. Um, but there's so many things around Penrith, and I'm sure Parramatta is the same. You know, local businesses are obviously decorated the crap out of their, you know, their space. You know, you've got panthered coloured donuts and cupcakes and, you know, a whole range of things. I went to buy decorating items on Sunday morning so I could help decorate our gym mm-hmm. and I struggled to get stuff on Sunday morning. I was out at like 8, 30, 9 o'clock and all the party supply places in Penrith had essentially sold out of streamers in all the Panthers' colours. And obviously the fact that you've got yellow as an overlapping colour mm-hmm. makes it very, very challenging. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but we I managed to squirrel away enough from it. I think I went to four different party supply places and I was like, right, I'll buy those, I'll buy those, I'll get some tablecloths, I'll, you know, just grab whatever I can and, and figure out what I'm going to do. Mm-hmm. Um but it is a really, it's a really good vibe around, and you know, given it's only Wednesday, I think by the time Sunday comes, it will be absolute fever pitch. Um, yeah. Anywhere west of Sydney Olympic Park. Yeah, it's it, it's so cool. Like I was thinking about this, uh, and I've, I think I've talked about it a lot during the year. Like, how many times if somebody had said you're going to be in the grand final, I would have been like, man, that'd be amazing to even experience that. You know, and and to be in three straight is just crazy, absolutely mm. crazy. Could never have expected it to happen. Um, and it, it feels like it all happens so quickly too. Hey, like it 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 doesn't feel like three years. It just feels like it's happened over the last eighteen months. Mm. 
Yeah, and yet, you know, going back to earlier in the discussion, um, it um, that grand final parade feels like a lifetime ago, but I completely understand what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. It, it's interesting. I thought the way they did that was really good, like with the the parade through uh, Penrith. Every, that way everyone got to see them, and then if you were able to get to the stadium, you, you were lucky enough to do that, you know. Um mm. And, and yeah, I mean it, it's cool to think like, you know, we're we're in that picture, and uh, it, it, like I don't know, were you, are you were you able to find yourself in that picture? Yes, because yes, because I found you. Yeah, yeah, you pointed me out. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's just crazy to think that like we're in that picture forever, you know. Yep. Um, and and it was just so cool. It was so so. Well, cool. that's why I was I was excited that. You know, in tweet I retweeted earlier today from Nathan Taylor mm. that I saw my daughter in that video, mm. um, mm. and she would have been very unhappy if she had not been able to get a photo with Nathan. Yeah. So I am very gra- very glad that he hung around. And when I rewatched that video, and I, I was just when I realised that it was her, and I watched it again, and I just watched her, mm. the look she gives that security guard. <laughs> <laughs> as if to say fuck off <laughs> is actually hilarious uh, it was it brought joy because i thought oh my god you do not want to be the person that drags nathan away from her let me tell you <laughs> um, let me tell you so and she, but she's having the best week she's having the best week and like i said it's only wednesday she's worn her panthers gear every day oh. yet has not really done anything apart from going to the fan day yesterday. Mm-hmm. She's worn her Panthers gear every day since Saturday. Like obviously wore it to the game. Um, and she's like got, cause she's got everything, um, you know, all the different minor premier shirts, final series shirts. We've just got the grand final shirt. So she's rotating everything and washing it straight away. So she's got it ready to wear again. Um, uh, and I like, I love that. I love that she loves it. So, yeah. You know, it's good when you see, and you know, all the vision yesterday and the day before from both the open training sessions. You know, seeing those little kids, they're so excited. Yeah, yeah. So, um, Andrew, I've got to ask, what about your little princess? She she likes the Pink Panthers. Does yeah. she understand what's happening? No. Oh, why are you not educating her? Because my team shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but her team isn't. <laughs> Oh, she, she... I'm calling child services. She needs to come and live with me. <laughs> hey, I'm, I got her to be a Panthers fan, all right? <laughs> Steady on. <laughs> no, look, it's, uh, she understands the score on how it all works. And I'll, I'll be telling you, she's, you know, she's interested in drawing and cartoons and stuff. She's not really big on, on footy. you got to remember. Why don't she follow it because she knows I do? Well, one of her parents is a West Tigers fan, so she goes to that parent and says, tell me about the grand final and... And the West Tigers. The West well, Tigers well 10 goes, years before you were born. Yeah. <laughs> the West Tigers fan goes, uh, they don't play footy in, in, after September, sweetheart. And then she goes to her other parent and says, tell me about the grand final. And, and that parent says, well, when you break the salary cap and do heaps of things that you're not supposed to do, <laughs> then you make one. Yeah, after you've done all of that. Yeah. And yeah. the, With an asterisk. Oh, I did see that tweet you put out today, Freaky. I don't know whether anyone would uh, would completely understand that, but I understood it. The best part. The best part was I had somebody reply back to it saying uh, living rent free, and it's like I posted an asterisk, you know. It's, 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 but, but also, who's won more premierships? So rent free where, mate? Yeah. Yeah, it's like they, they should have <laughs> taken off them. That's so I'm funny. Saying, they should have had it taken off them. You can't cheat. It's like, oh, we cheated every other year except this year. It's like, mm, mm. So, like that How one. convenient. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> so what are you looking forward to most about the game? Like in terms of as a rugby league game mm-hmm. or as a grand final rather than, I suppose, focusing specifically on the competing teams? Is there anything specific about the grand final you're looking forward to? I'm looking forward Jimmy to- Barnes. <laughs> Shut up, Andrew. I'm looking forward to. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing the first thing I will look. F- oh, okay, here's the thing. I think Parramatta needs to start quick. If Parramatta doesn't start quick, I think that it could be a bit of a problem for them. 
I will be looking at if the Panthers stop their offloads. And the other thing I'll be looking at is uh, Reed Marnie and he, how he comes out of dummy half. And, I, I, and I, turns into Tom Brady. Yeah, yeah. Like, he, he needs to oh – man, hit so many forward passes. So <laughs> He's many. so bad. But, yeah, that's – that's what I will be looking at because if I don't see those things from Parramatta, then I think they're in a bit of trouble and I'll be confident in the Panthers finishing strong because they just finish strong generally. Um, so that, that's the thing that will get me. Um, and that's it really. And then seeing like, you know, the, the, I love seeing the way the Panthers are so methodical and they pick teams apart and, then I guess the other thing is, like, are they the great side? Like, if they don't win the grand final, they've had a very good run, very, very good mm. run. If they win this grand final, we have to now readjust where we think of them in terms of not only a team in the modern era, there's only been a couple of teams that have won back-to-back titles in the modern era, but then you look at what their future is going to hold as well. And anything they do from that point on, after win, if they win back to back, if they win in another couple of years' time, or they, you know, then we start looking at, you know, is this a dynasty? Mm. And that's really, that's really cool. That is really, really cool. Yeah, it's um, yeah, I, I'm, I want to see. Well, the weather is potentially going to be a factor as well. So they're, they're predicting, you know, 10 days straight of rain or, or at least rain periods. Mm. So, and I think that if that, having said that, I'm looking out of my office window right now and it's sunny. I mean, there are clouds, but it's sunny. So that's an odd thing to say. Um, it's raining outside my window. Oh, good. I'm glad. We're not playing the game down there, though, are we? <laughs> Uh, the, two even, if, the two even each other's, yeah, that's why it gets patchy rain. If, if, if we do get this weather that has been predicted, then uh, I think that plays into the Panthers' hands because I, Parramatta could not have the expansive game, or they, they couldn't play the expansive game that they want to play in those kinds of conditions. They, you, you know, there's obviously risk versus reward, but Parramatta have chosen that they are a – they're a high risk taking team, but in that kind of weather, it won't it won't come off. So the offloads, the second phase plays, you know, nothing will stick in that kind of weather, um, or it'll stick less often or less consistently. Uh, and Panthers will just grind them down then. Yeah, and just and go the, through their systems. Penrith is such a good wet weather team. I, I think it's one of the the things that not many people have picked up on at all is that when it's raining, they normally win and win pretty comfortably. Now, the Bureau of Meteorology is saying that there's a 60% chance of rain on Sunday at Homebush. So we'll find out. Like, it, I'm just trying to see. So it looks like by – it says it's only going to be 10% chance of rain after 8 p.m., but it's 20% chance of rain before that, just if there's mm. slippery ground. And it's it's that wet weather style of football. Well, you huh? know what else? You know what else the wet weather's going to impact? What? The flying ability of flies. True, that's true. Don't see flies in in the rain. You know why? Why is that? Because you're in a car. Because <laughs> you're in the fucking car and you're getting drunk. <laughs> you can't see shit. Yeah, that, that could really that could play in Parramatta's favour. The, the dry fly. Yeah. The dry fly. <laughs> the dry fly factor. Uh, Okay. Hey, um, as you guys know that uh, oh, Nathan God. Cleary is is a part shareholder in, a, in the People's Beer. The People's Beer. I did People's know beer. that. I do know it's, that. It's such a huge story. Do you know how much percentage share he has in this company? Pick a number. Five. You're actually not far off. It's eight. Oh, that's mm, I knew it was less than ten, but I an didn't 8% know. Eight percent share in a company is enough to get an article written about you. It's like, it's like when Jay-Z, they said Jay-Z was the owner of the Brooklyn Nets and he owned a percentage of a percentage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. This is the, this hey, is the problem that random, we do. Yeah. 
I was going to say, random question. I'm, I'm doing a survey for somebody who's doing a um, MBA, we, and it's all rugby league based. We're yeah. great with surveys. And this question, okay, so let's do this in real time. In your opinion, who are the top four teams within the NRL for a sustained, for, sorry, for sustained success within the past 10 seasons? Melbourne, Roosters, Panthers. Are you reckon Panthers? Last four seasons. In the last 10 years. The last no, 10 years. Last, last 10 years. But they've been in, what, at least four final series in the last 10 years. That's not so bad. So 2013 to 2022. Yeah. I'm going to say, I'm going to say. And Sharks. Melbourne, Melbourne Roosters, yes. Sharks. Yeah, they were the ones I was thinking of. And I don't know, it was Manly too too early for their run? Yeah, they were a bit hit and miss during that period. Yeah, I wouldn't say Manly. So okay. I've, got, I've got Melbourne Roosters. What about the Rabbits? Yeah, the Rabbits, yeah, yeah. Well, I think the Sharks only missed one final, uh, two final series in that time. How many did South miss? One. But but I think that in, in terms of consistency, yeah, the rabbits. That, I think that would wrap out the top four. No right or wrong answers. Just saying. <laughs> yeah, true. Just going to have a look here. <laughs> yeah, let, let's make it fact based. <laughs> so 2013, South was second, Cronulla were fifth. Uh, 2014, South third, Cronulla spoon. That's probably enough to see him out, really. Mm. 2015, some interesting Cronulla questions sixth, here. South seventh. Sharks premiers in 2016, South finished 12th. Yeah, but it wasn't a real one. I mean, I want to put Penrith in there, but I just don't know. Uh... So 2013 is the, I think, I think you've got is the first, Ivan, uh, first Ivan era, yeah? But I'd be, I'd be looking more at... Um, Grand final appearances. And Mel- yeah, Melbourne and Roosters, who's had more, more grand final appearances in the last 10 years other than those two? It's Penrith. Yeah, that's, yeah. I don't know. I, for some reason, I just don't feel like it's been a 10-year run. But when you think about it, like, but it, under hook, they were pretty good. But but this is, you know, this is the five-year plan that's taken 12 years. So they've, they've <laughs> only Panthers have only missed the finals three times since 2013. Wow. 2013, 2015, and 2019. Oh, we're so good. On 2019 was the pits. <laughs> yeah, it was the pits, but you also were only only had two wins less than losses. 11 wins, 13 losses, same in 2013. I know, but it was the suckiest year. Oh, God. I have PTSD about 2019. That might have been the year I did that drunk podcast about. <laughs> yeah. That was just the year where it doesn't matter what Penrose tried to do on the field, just nothing clicked. That was the first year of Ivan's second coming. Yeah, that was that was the that was a salty year. Mm. Yeah. And I tell you what, ever since then, <laughs> that's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm putting okay, what's the, the next buggy? question? What's the next question? Oh no, that that was the last question. The rest was that was it. The rest oh. was more about like me personally and my age group and stuff. I'm right. not divulging that. 20, 20, How much 20, money 20, I earn. 300 to 400k? I mean, I know all the answers. <laughs> 300k, Jesus, wouldn't that You're, be nice? Aren't yeah. you in that tax bracket where you just stop paying tax? Yeah, <laughs> it's like you pay like a dollar fifty if you want. Oh, yeah. I live in the Cayman Islands, guys. Actually, I, I don't <laughs> live them. in Paris. You own them. <laughs> You've got an eight percent share in the rest of the world. Oh, I have an eight percent share in the Panthers. <laughs> Um, so, sorry, going back to that um, Nathan Cleary eight percent shareholder piece. What prompted that? Are you seeing an article somewhere? I was just I saw Nathan Cleary trending, so I thought I'll click on it, see what's happened. Is he injured? Uh, what's going on? And no, I find out that he's gonna have he's gonna have the thoughts of Ukraine in his head. Bullshit I call. An eight percent share in a beer company? Who gives a fuck? Is anyone gonna talk about maybe something to do with I don't know football, football? maybe? One of the journos did a, a story. It was probably Staff Riders when I think about it, but they did it about um, Ricky Stewart and, and Jamin Salmon. And Jamin Salmon was like, oh. I'm talking about what everyone was, said I was talking about when I was 12. And it's like, man, is are we really doing all of these dumbass stories in Grand Final Week? Yes, they do. 
So dumb. And they hang their hat on it. They'll say at the end of the year, oh, every time people criticize them for only doing shitty stories, they go, oh, but you get all these great positive stories we did during the grand final. I'm like, yeah. yeah, they were shit. Yeah. Like, can we just have some proper, genuine insight for a change? Mm. Why have all of us got to do it for them instead? I know. So anyway, you're the fly. Yeah. Right. <laughs> If the fly is traveling, I am going to regret hour. telling you this. I really am. <laughs> if the fly's in a car and it's moving at the speed of light and it flies forwards, surely the fly goes through the windscreen backwards. Well, the, if the fly's going backwards and it's going at the speed of light, does that mean that its own head goes through its own asshole? Uh, surely a fly. a fly can't go faster than the speed of light. Well, then the fly would be, you know, the fly would see the rest of the car traveling backwards in time compared to what it was doing. Uh uh-huh, right. That's what if, the, what if the fly, though, was holding a golf club? Uh, it, well, what type of club? Are we talking about a driver? Or yeah, a, it's, it's a driver. You... The one I saw was a driver, which means it might be long enough to actually wedge the fly in the front of the car. And I won't be able to go forwards or backwards because it'll be poking out the both windows. <laughs> Here's a question Sorry. for you. If the if there's a if there's a car travelling at the speed of light and there's a fly holding a driver, right? Yeah. And somebody says, Tut, "Grab the driver." What driver do you grab? Well, it's the one that he can throw backwards the easiest. But or do you drive? Do, do you grab the driver of the car? Yeah, yeah. But he probably can't do that because he's already got his hands full with the other driver. And what so he's ha- got to throw that driver out. But he's got to make sure he throws that driver backwards. Then what happens if you throw a football out the window? Well, <laughs> did the football go backwards? Exactly. Apparently it's not. Impossible, impossible for this fly to do this <laughs> and go forwards. I just wonder. I just wonder in this whole scenario, like, who does Paul Kent get to blow into the thing that <laughs> him start the car? I wonder how big this fucking fly is. I know. <laughs> it must be some fucking big ass blow fly. Eh? He doesn't notice it. About the size of Buds Rothfield. Oh God, deal! Oh, I just saw a funny tweet, which is fu- which is funny. God, that makes no sense. So someone tweeted, "I think it's cute that Brad Arthur is trying to gift his son a grand final ring. It's kind of like when Nathan Cleary gifted one to his dad." Oh, that. <laughs> a bit harsh. <laughs> so funny. Oh, that's hilarious. Where are we? <laughs> Can I just say, NRL Twitter this week, though, has been, well, in the last two weeks, has been both amazing and really just wanting me to deactivate my account. Mm. (laughs) It's just, some of it's been the pits, but then there's little nuggets like that, which are hilarious. So many, so many people that just use rugby league as an outlet for their just personal agony. (laughs) <laughs> like, I saw you tweeted something freaky about if you can't be happy then just go away just stop watching the game it's like do how many people need to use rugby league as a reason just to ooze out sadness come on man you're supposed to enjoy watching the football and not just be sad about it the whole time it's like, oh, I fucking hate this I fucking hate that it's like well fucking don't watch it then dickhead go and watch something else <laughs> Go and fucking put uh, who like go and find a car that's full of flies. Why is your car full of flies, Paul Kent? Uh, What's in your car that the flies are attack, attracted to? Probably. <laughs> we need to start a Twitter account, Paul Kent's fly. Paul Actually, Kent. no, let's not do that. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad. <laughs> um, the fly in the car. Um. Okay. So, Dally M's tonight. Who's going to win? Mm, I'll tell you who's not going to win. Mm. Anyone in the last place team. That's that's a good point. I think it'll be uh, Ben Hunt. Really? Brent Kamali's not going to get coach of the year? Shocking. Um, look, he'll get um, passive passenger in, being thrown in front of a bus of the year. I, I generally feel very sorry for what they did to him. So do I. I'm, yeah. I've, I've met him once or twice. He's a he's a brilliant human. He doesn't come across as one of those big egotistical morons. And he was just starting his rugby league coaching career, and for that to be dumped in his lap, that's fucking horrific. Mm-hmm. 
Um, but it's also the West Tigers. So, you know, they're on point. Mm. Mm. So you think Ben Hunt freaky? Yeah, I think Ben Hunt. Um, the other names I've seen thrown around, uh, I don't know. I, I just think Ben Hunt was fantastic for this, the whole season, whereas some of the other players, maybe they were good in, in here and there. Uh, Dylan Edwards, I, I guess, is probably going to get a look in um, just because the Panthers won so many games. He didn't participate on origin, so um, so he'd get a lot of points there. But, um, yeah, I, I, I put my money on Ben Hunt. I'm going to throw yeah. Nico Hines into the mix. Yeah, he's been pretty good. Yeah. So, uh, I, I, think yeah. Dylan, I think Dylan Edwards... Yeah. But I do get worried about Edwards having points taken off him by other Panthers. You kind this of is obviously someone, what we saw a couple of years ago with Nathan. You kind of need a player who's in a team that's around that fifth to twelfth sort of ladder position, because one player will tend to carry those sides. Um, yeah, so correct. Cameron Munster might be a good chance this year. Um, yeah, it's not really. Yeah, Ben Hunt won't be far off either. I wouldn't imagine, but it'll be somewhere around there. Because that was a problem that, that Melbourne had for a long time was that they had, you know, all those great plays there, but none of them could consistently win the award because they're always taking points off one another. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm Andy, thinking what about, about coach, what about Coach of the Year? Ooh, I reckon Fitzgibbon might give it a shake. Yeah. And, think, or Peyton. I think it's got to be Peyton, doesn't it? It's got to be one of, I think probably one of those two. Or third. <clears throat> I'll go with Fitzgibbon, Peyton... Cleary will have to be the top three nominated. Mm. They'd be the top three. Who else could you put in there? No one what, else. What about um, Potter? Did he turned that bloody team around. He did? Like, I would have him in my top five. Coaches. Oh, yeah, I'd, I'd throw him in there, absolutely. Yeah. Got their attack working, got their defence working, got them winning games. Mm-hmm. What more do you need to do as a coach? Got the putrid stench of Trent Barrett out of there. Yeah, got all those chairs out. Yep. Uh, got the sooking out of there. Threw the eyeliner in the bin. Yeah, geez, that took a while. Mm. <laughs> there was lots of it. Yeah, they had to get a dumpster in. Mm. But, uh, yeah, I, he's definitely worthy of being in the mix, absolutely. But that's about it. What are the big awards that they have? They're really the two big ones. R- rookie of the Year. Oh, man, who would that be? Does Taylor- um, Nanai. I'm going with Nanai. Oh, yeah. He was very good. Mm. He, he should absolutely romp that in. Um, I wonder if Suwali qualifies. Uh, there was yeah. a How many games that- did he play last year? Five. Yeah, he won't. He doesn't qualify. Is it four games is the most you can play the year before? I think it is. It's either four or five. He'd be right on the mm-hmm. cusp. Yeah, he'd have gone close though. Um, geez, Jacob Arthur's got to be a chance, hasn't he? Nepotism, people, come on! I tell you, I tell you what, Ilias would be pretty good too, but I don't think he'll win it. But he he had a really good first year. Yeah. Mm, this is a not a huge amount. Mm. Ezra Mam. He's been all right. Yeah, yeah I, I still think I still think Nanai. Nanai yeah. is just oh, it's, he's had a good season. He's been amazing. Just so good. down the side on the on the for the Cowboys at like with him and uh Luciano Leilua. Oh. How the, good um, has he been? I love. I've always loved Luciano Leilu. Even when he played for the Dragons, I thought when he went to West, it was a really good signing. And look, he they didn't know. The, they told us to know to use him. Yeah. Well, yeah. It doesn't help when everyone else sucks, you know. Yeah. <laughs> no, it doesn't. That's true. That's true. I know that there's, sounds a little bit harsh. Thanks, Captain Obvious. <laughs> but there's a uh, suck. There's absolutely zero. Uh, anyone can say to counter that. Mm. No. Mm. Fact. It, hence why I'm not. <laughs> mm. <laughs> um, uh, there's also Tyron Wishart. 
from the I mean, storm. Yeah, I, I, I thought he had an, a, just a so-so year, huh? Yeah, I wasn't fussed with him, hey? Yeah. I, I think um, I'm he kicks on next year because he needs to. Well, it's funny you should mention kind of Wishart. Um, so Cooper Johns has been let go or not re-signed by the Melbourne Storm. I'm not surprised. Oh, yeah, I'm not surprised by that. I'm more surprised that they had him playing so late into the year, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I can understand that, but... I feel like COVID, as is the case with quite a lot of people, mm-hmm. but I actually think that his personal development was stifled by being in that system behind so many other players. Mm-hmm. And I feel like it's, you know, with the storm, unless you are getting the game time in first grade, Apart from, you know, a season or two where you, you're under Bellamy, you're learning the systems, the structures, you know, and, and what a, a good professional club can do, you just – you don't develop as a player because you're never given the opportunities. The worst thing too so, is if he's playing lower grades for the Storm, it means he's up in Queensland, so he's still not around his, his family anywhere. Um, no, that's right. So it'll be interesting to see where where he goes. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if he goes to Newcastle just to go into the junior system there. But um, you reckon? I don't reckon he'd go to Newcastle. I think well, he'd his, want his his own path. His brother went back there recently. Yeah. Um, I mean, the other alternative is to go over to uh, England, but I, I don't think he'll get a spot. Oh, in he a, won't go to England. He won't get a spot in a Super League team. I have to go to a Championship side. Yeah, and no, I'm, he won't. He won't go there. I just thought that was really fascinating. Brody Croft just won the Player of the Year over there. Mm. It's a it's a well made point. He was the best player in 2022 in Super League out of all of those English players. Mm. Mm. Better than Lomax, sucks. even. No. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's hard to imagine a player better than Lomax. If Brody Croft Amazing. was playing for the West Tigers. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> no. Don't. Imagine, if, imagine if the West Tigers had Croft and Lomax. Oh, they'd be amazing. They'd be unstoppable. Imagine if, the West, imagine if we had a, a marker where we could say there was a, a Man of Steel winner from Super League that did go to the West Tigers and how much they improved with that player on the field. Oh, we do, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Only one of them? Hey? Only one of them? I know that. I think that was basically all the West Tigers recruitment when it came to England was, who won Man of Steel? Let's sign them. Mm. Mm. Why has this not worked? Because you didn't need him. I don't understand the question. Uh, Very funny. Well, we should wrap this up because we've had an hour and a half conversation. Yeah. This this can be one of our longer podcasts that we've done. And essentially, Nadine's the only one getting paid out of this. Yeah. <laughs> so I do it for love. I was I was also in the background on the Today Show this morning. It's been a big day of media for me, guys. <laughs> you can't a celebrity be. over here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I should have just had a banner in the background of you know for the podcast. I didn't think about that. I was too busy <sighs> repping the Panthers. I was going to say, what, what's your uh, what do you what do you charge? The uh the morning shows for for an appearance like that. No, oh, because they've got tons it. of money and they throw it at anyone. <laughs> hey, what are you saying? What I'm saying, <laughs> turn it up and say, I'll, you I'll say they throw your... it at anyone. Oh, yeah, you turn rude. Up and say, I'll be on your shim sham bloody shitty little show, asking prices <laughs> a million dollars, and I'll go, okay, no worries. I want to say we'd all just trained when because they came to the gym, um, and we'd all just trained, so we weren't necessarily looking our best. They did a live cross at like 10 to 6, I think was the first one, and then they did the second one at, I know, quarter past 6. I wasn't there for that one. Um, but, you know, they're there setting up, watching us all sweating our asses off and, you know, then they're out getting us to try to be all happy and do this. Oh, geez, Louise. Yeah. you got The pitfalls of being a celebrity. No. <laughs> yeah, they're watching you train at the gym. Sounds a bit... Mm. Bit naff. Bit creepy. The cameras weren't mm. rolling. They were just there waiting to have Carl talk to them in their ear and say, what's going on in Penrith? Oh, yeah, Carl as well. No, Carl was in the studio, but... I know, but I mean... I, 
He was involved in the process. Yeah. Was, was I, well, it's funny because I think oh, probably <laughs> I um I think I saw something that the Today Show is doing their show live from the Leagues Club on Friday morning. Cool. So you can go. You could go to Panthers Leagues, Leagues Club and see uh Carl in what he calls happy hour wearing <laughs> skinny jeans. You could take yes. a um. You, you could take if, if we had something like a big cardboard cutout of one of the hosts, so you could put like a Panthers jumper on a big logo of the podcast on there. You just park it in there behind him. Exactly. I I, I just cannot. I'll leave that with you, freaky. <laughs> the quality individuals that could rock up for a five thirty a.m. start at Panthers Leagues Club on Friday morning. It'd be a shame if somebody made their way onto the broadcast, wouldn't it? It would be a shame. Said something inappropriate. Yeah. Mm. Say it's pants. Mm. Mm. Although, although the person who would be most likely to do that doesn't like people, so he's probably not going to do that. True. Although, <laughs> his, dis- his dislike for people could be enough motivation to do it. I, do you know, they, they had a world cycling event down in Wollongong, and I was talking to somebody in Wollongong, and we were talking about what you could do. Drugs. <laughs> I was like, I was, like <laughs> I was talking about, like, the stuff you could do um during the cycling event and one of the things I said is just go there and stand on the on the side and just keep yelling out as they go past pedal faster <laughs> he's catching you <laughs> or just as they just as they're the whole peloton's coming up saying oh no my dog got loose and watch all the cyclists freaked out watch out for the puddles yeah yeah oh it's too funny Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's going to be an road. exciting. It's going to be an exciting day where we're all very, yeah, we're all very excited and, about the prospect uh, of mm-hmm. another grand final win. Um, but one thing we haven't said is that would mean that Panthers have won all four grades, which has never been done before, and that would be something significantly epic. It would be crazy. It would be absolutely crazy. Um, Never been done in the history of the game. Just doing what they've done already hasn't been done since 1982 and the Balmain Tigers were the last team to do that. I think South 2 in 69 were the closest. So I think they won the three lower grades and they made the grand final in 69 as favourites and got outsmarted by Balmain. The last time Balmain won a premiership too. There you go. That's the history episode that we were waiting to do. Boom! <laughs> there you go. What more did you want, people? We're giving you everything. Flies, history, <laughs> golf sticks, something about animals being killed. Who knows? If a fly is travelling in a car, <laughs> it's going the speed of light and it's flying forward and then it gets an erection, is it... Okay, sorry, that's going too far. <laughs> so is it because there's a horse involved? What? I thought you were going to go down a dolphin route there. So well, oh you could have you could have flown through a horse and out the other end and come out and then got stuck in a dolphin's windpipe. Just remember, choke a dolphin, save a life, choke a dolphin. <laughs> oh dear, there goes our uh, sponsorship from some aquarium. <laughs> Thanks, Andrew. Uh, this is just this is just spiral, spiraled, yeah. spiraled. You've this is usually it. what happens at two in the morning. Yeah. It, so this is what happens when I'm not in my normal element. Why what, aren't you in your normal in, element? Yeah. This, is the, this is the time when I'm not usually awake doing podcasts. This is your oh, time. This is like normal human time. Yeah, I yeah. Don't operate on this. I yeah. know. I'm so sorry that you've had to work in, into my normal human time schedule. <laughs> Oh, Andrew gets upset when we do podcasts when there's sunlight outside. He likes it. It's He's such a vampire. Night, yeah. It's like, yeah. I, I wake up and start start being intelligently creative at around about eleven o'clock at night. Mm. It lasts for about two or three hours when no one can witness it. Mm-hmm. I just choose to do that. Oh well, you do yeah. good. Apparently. Anyway, uh, where can we find you, Nadine? You can find me on Twitter at NLC081. And you can also see some of my witty stuff on Instagram for the Fergo and Freak podcast. Yeah, you kill it. I see you doing stuff. I don't even know how you do it. I'm like, wow, that's pretty cool. So there, there'll be quite a bit of content from the grand final this week, mm-hmm. um, obviously. 
Uh, I am intending to be there for Gates Open, which means I'll be capturing all the goings on around the precinct and the NRLW final, the whatever the the, uh, the state cup final. I was trying to think of what the proper name is. Um, uh, obviously, Jimmy Barnes and <laughs> and uh, and obviously the the main game. So. Uh, yeah, so as long as my battery doesn't go flat on my phone. Um, take two phones. Which was, oh, I'll have to take a battery pack. That was my biggest issue at Magic Round. My phone was going flat all the time. Uh, but I have a new phone, so I'm hoping that the battery will be okay for the whole day. I've got a question for you, Nadine. Yes. Will you please, please, no. run out MySpace account? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, no. Bring thank, MySpace. Thank you for doing that. I'll give you the login details later. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yes, that's where that's where you can find me. So there'll be a whole heap of grand final content this weekend. Excellent. Where can we find you, Andrew Ferguson? Um, at Panthers Leagues Club at five AM on Friday. Nice. Yes, do it. Yeah, yeah, probably not. No. Um, Andrew RLP on Twitter. Usually pissing off people or putting out stats or being boring. It's one of those three. Yeah, you got to fit into those three categories. Yeah, I'd, I'd do all three, but yeah. Yeah. I pick and choose. Um, and when, where do we find you, Freaky? Well, you can find me. I tweet sometimes at, at League Freak. <laughs> um, I also have a website, leaguefreak.com. A hey, website. Hey. <laughs> You're so humble. Oh, yeah, well, I've got 15 of them. <laughs> uh, pay through the nose. They put my website. Only, uh, only 15. They put the website, like, uh, what's it called? The address. Yeah. I can't remember what it's called, the URL or whatever the fuck. Yeah, they, they're putting them fees up because of inflation. Of and course they like, are. Why it, costs is... so much, it costs so much more for them to do nothing. Yeah, it's like it exists. There's yeah. nothing to do. It's not a garden you've got to maintain or something. Like, <laughs> no, fuck, it's just keep pointing it at the same place. That's all right. Nothing changes that needs no service whatsoever. Here, it's now got more expensive. Cunts. Exactly. Oh. <laughs> Ask but fair. Yeah. Um, <laughs> sorry, Nathan. Um, <laughs> it just came out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah. That's what she said. <laughs> uh, thank you, everyone, for listening. We really appreciate when you listen. Thank you to Nadine for coming on the podcast and running My it pleasure. properly. Yeah, it, did, it was great. You basically hosted this podcast. Thank fantastic. you. And uh, we will catch everyone in the next episode, which will happen in about 20 minutes. <laughs> There you go. Catch us all later. Bye. Oh, Palmer bet with the big don't argue. Punters will love that. Download our app today and enjoy tackle busting benefits with great promos, great odds, and same game multi this footy finals at Palmer Bet. Gamble responsibly. For gamblers help call 1-800-858-858.